Plain English for me is really the, the essence of good communication uh, because good communication is about including as many people as possible. Uh, the further you move away from that, the more jargon you use, the, then the more people that it, uh, you exclude at the end. Uh, my previous uh, role was as a, an IT project manager and we, we always found that you, you would do a project for six months but unless the communication was clear, concise uh, and, and absolutely um, correct at the start, then what you would end up with six months down the line was something that was very, very different from what was actually expected and everyone would just sit around and shrug their shoulders and go, well that wasn't really what we wanted, was it? Well, plain English really is seen as something which is common sense. If you want people to understand what you're saying, then of course you're going to use plain English. Um, and to that extent, you probably wouldn't really feel that it was necessary to legislate for, for common sense. The problem now really is that we're in a, a, a framework, a legislative framework, if you like, where we're trying to do away with as much regulation as we can to, to stop business, uh, anything that stops business from being able to grow. I think that legislation now is looked upon as something which is going to do that. Plain English, I think, is different because ultimately, what, we're, what you're trying to do with plain English is make your products accessible and fair. And therefore, I, I think that moving plain English forward at the moment is actually um, an aid to better business and, and not a barrier to it at all. My nomination for a Golden Bull, or, or perhaps I would rename it Ye Olde Golden Bull with an E at the end, is actually the Houses of Parliament as a whole. Because coming into this place 18 months ago, um, the amount of tradition uh, that is in this place, it, it stands as a barrier towards actually becoming part um, of, the, of the process. Uh, the inability to call anybody by their their first name, by their second name, um, the uh, the need to memorise 650 constituency names so that I can actually um, call on a, a person that's either opposite or, or um, on the benches beside me. Whether I call someone an honourable friend, a right honourable friend, thankfully they have now at least dumped the gallant and honourable friends or learned and honourable friends. Um, but there are so many barriers put in place for, for not just those who are watching uh, the proceedings, but actually those who are new to the proceedings. So it almost feels like an old boys club and you have to learn the rules before you're allowed to, to speak. The worst possible example though for me in the, in the last year has been when bills have gone to the Lords, been amended, come back to the Commons, and we then end up in the ridiculous situation of voting to disagree uh, with Lord's amendments to, to an original bill, all of which is laid out on a, on a bit of paper that doesn't actually state anything about what the bill is actually saying. Thoroughly, thoroughly confusing and excluding to everyone except those who've been here for 30 years. So my, my nomination for Yoldi Golden Bully is without a doubt the whole of the Houses of Parliament. <laughs>